McDougal coming at you with a book review today, my second video blog of the day. Uh, this one is Business Without the Bull Sh Star T. That's Business Without the Bull Sh Star T. With uh, this is by Jeffrey James. Uh, this book was decent. Um, if you don't have a business degree, if you don't have business experience, it's probably a good book for you. But uh, for me, you know, I, I've got kind of street smarts experience uh, with uh, educational business education and experience. So for me, I didn't get a lot of value out of it, but it was a good read for me to say, hey, you know, I got this stuff pretty good. I mean, I don't really need to read too many more business books. I need to produce results. Um, I'm just going to go through quickly. Is we'll try to keep this a short uh, blog. Uh, read through some stuff that I highlighted because I highlighted quite a few things. So, uh, how to earn respect from your peers. So, one of the reasons why I don't. Uh, so, if you played sports, I'm a huge believer in team sports. As you're growing up as a kid, and because you learn how to work with people, all types of people, in the competitive nature, you're trying to work towards a common goal. Uh, it's not about. Uh, money and political power you guys are just there to win there's and like being in the army uh, i was in the reserves when i was 17 till 21 the, the stuff that i learned there was just absolutely amazing um so a lot of the stuff that i read out of this book it's, it's basically these are skills you, you can learn you know in the army or with sports depending where you are on the totem pole okay so how to earn respect from your peers kind of important if you're in the corporate world uh people are drawn to individuals who are truly what they seem to be being yourself is therefore the foundation of earning respect that's what i'm doing these video blogs man i'm just i'm just enjoying doing these and um uh what you see is what you get with me there's three types of people in business i'll cover this in a different uh, uh video blog but there's one type of person you categorize people in three different buckets when you're dealing with them in the business world. One is like me. What you see is what you get. Straight face, hard nose. Uh, you know, I might say things that are just, like, whoa, he just said that? Yeah, I just said that, but that's what it is. There's no, I'm not, I'm not messing around, okay? So there's no cloak and dagger. The next one is people will get you to do work and you know whatever and you're you're all in the deal but then when it comes time for you to take your chips out of the poker table or off you know to get your cut of the deal or whatever they'll boom they'll cut your hand off because they want it for their greed okay then there's a third type of person that'll pretend that your friend and work with you and but they're really backdoor sabotaging you okay those are three types of personalities in the business world that's out of the winning it winning by intimidation book which i'll cover another topic but that just reminded me of this so for me um there's a saying it, it takes a, a lifestyle to a lifetime to build a reputation and only an instant to ruin it so i want to build my reputation uh the right way just uh straightforward uh business without the bolts star t okay uh yeah i highlighted a lot in here so i'm gonna go kind of when people realize that they're really being heard, they'll tell you what's important about their jobs, their dreams, their fears, their goals. One thing with building teams and uh, even in my relationship with my girlfriend, I'm really trying to, you know, because uh, I'm a left brain kind of guy primarily, so everything makes logical sense and I'm efficient, moving fast and all that kind of stuff. So a lot of times if someone's talking about something and I already know the answer, I don't really want to listen. However, uh, relationships and business and your personal life, it's not about you. A relationship goes two ways. Oftentimes, people just want to be heard. So saying stuff verbally, getting your words out into the world or uh, letting someone hear or someone's listening to what you have to say, it means a lot to them. They get that stress and that energy out of them. That's one thing that I'm really trying to work on. Uh, you get really good results from that, uh, from people on your business team. Um, and for men, your girlfriends, just let them just let them talk. Just, I understand, honey. Oh, yeah. Um, okay. So give credit where credit is due. There are times... Uh, 
that. So there's times when you'll want to toot your own horn. However, if you want your coworkers to respect you, you'll make those times few and far in between. That's true. So uh, there's another good book that I covered. It's called uh, Leadership Secrets by John Maxwell. Another great book. So this is like a leadership management type book. Think before you speak. You know, uh, nobody respects motor mouths or blabber mouths. I understand that. P pausing before you speak not only keeps you from half articulating, half baked ideas, it also makes you seem thoughtful and more wise. And if you're responding to somebody's comments, it shows you've taken the time to digest what you've heard. Better to remain silent and be thought a fool than to speak out and remove all doubt. So I see what they're saying here. And it's one side of the coin. It's one style. Is it the right way? No. Is it the only way? No. But it's a way. And if that's the way that works for you, great. So I could see this uh, being very effective in the corporate world definitely high level board meetings uh in actual business meetings for sure for sure business meetings but it depends on the business meeting what's at stake are people paying you to talk if they're if you're in like a strategic brainstorming meeting be yourself don't be all stoic and hold your ideas back and everything doesn't have to be this whole strategic conversation just talk just it's okay to talk one thing I, I seen Donald Trump and people would say stuff about him, about the way he talks. I remember he said, uh, he's like, I'm a businessman. He's like, I don't have time to be politically correct all the time and nor do I want to make time. He's like, I have a business to run. I'm running for president. And it's not just a mom and shop business. He's like got a multi-billion dollar business. Like that's insane. Okay. That's insane. And he's running for president. Like, give the guy a break. You know, uh, you don't have to be perfect to produce results. Okay, moving on. Let's see what else we have here. Okay. Oh, the vampire. Oh, this is a good chapter. Ooh, this is good. He's got 10 types of annoying co-workers. The waffler, the conqueror, the dramatist, the iconist, the droner, the frenemy. I highlighted that. Um, yeah, cause I look at people, I just see the good in them and that's the way I chase, but, uh, I've learned to really kind of guide that with, uh, with a, with a fine tuned comb and tooth. I don't know. The frenemy, a frenemy pretends to be your biggest cheerleader, your best confident and, and the only person who's really on your side. Meanwhile, the frenemy is subtly sabotaging everything you do so true so true yeah so whatever the vampire the parasite the genius somehow they never seem to do anything in the here and now geniuses take on projects but fail to follow through yep analysis or paralysis by analysis okay so wow there's lots in here yeah uh, employees are peers, not children. Great bosses treat every employee as if he or she were the most important person in the firm. Yeah. Excellence is expected everywhere from loading dock to the boardroom. And as a result, employees do their best work for themselves, the boss, and the company. Cool. I get it. Uh, yeah. Leadership is a role. It's, a, it's not a job. You're not like telling people. There's different types of leadership, man. There's no, it's the martial arts of money, man. There's no one right way. Just do it your way. Okay. Wow. I highlighted a lot in here. So I'll read just a couple more things and see what else we got here. Anything else? It's a pretty easy read too. So I like easy reads because, you know, when you get so busy, it's hard to read a book and you've got 25 pages at the end of the day to, to smash through. Um, but if I could read something like this and get through it, that's cool. It makes a light read. Um, okay, how to write a compelling email. That's interesting. If you don't tell people the reason for the email immediately, chances are they'll move on. Sure, whatever. Uh, these are just little tips, experience tips I'm noticing. Um, I'm, a, I'm a true believer of just, you know, 
equity of life experience. You're increasing your growth curve by learning through people. I'm actually in a stage where I'm kind of secluded right now, um, building my internet businesses and uh, competing in martial arts. It's, it's the path of a warrior. It's pretty much one of solitude, but uh, you learn how to fight alone if you're on that kind of path. Um, the pro provocative argument. Acting in such a defensive manner is that you can find yourself embroiled in a he said, he said, she said email war. Yeah, don't get into that flaming. You need to recognize emotional bullshit when someone's proving each other's right, especially accountants. I worked in these accounting firms. I would just like, you know, talk about an issue and whatever. And it, if it was a different perspective than, than someone else who was like a friend of mine, good guy, and they would just immediately attack and defend and prove their points. Like, oh, okay, dude, just, just back off, relax, relax. We're just having a conversation. It doesn't really matter who's right or wrong. Um, but I just, that's not really how everyone thinks. So anyways, emotional or no, uh, business without the bulk shh, star T by Jeffrey James. Pretty good book and uh, enjoy your weekend. Take care.